Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Kellogg's Lips YouTube channel. For today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I paint faces in a bit of a tutorial and also a bit of a time-lapse Q&A session as well. Before we start, a huge thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring this video. If you are looking to design your own website, portfolio, or a shop, be sure to check out Squarespace. They're a genuinely ace, a great place with lots of type faces. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's start painting. So when I start out with painting with skin, I usually start off with bold, um, undiluted blots of colour, like you can see here. It's a wet on dry technique approach, and once those are down, I get clean water on my brush and use a pooling technique to pull and dilute those pools of paint outwards. And in doing so, it creates those nice blends and smooth gradual transitions in the skin tones. You can see me pulling paint just right here and kind of diluting it to blend outwards. I usually start off with the eyes and once those are down pat, I go on to do the rest of the initial skin layers in a very light wash. Once those first layers dry, I usually go over the skin again and add multiple layers to deepen the skin tones, particularly the reds. I'm using the same technique of applying wet on dry, mostly dark colours, and then using a pulling technique with clean water to blend, like on this cheek here. Once the first few initial skin layers are done, I tend to start going into the details and painting in maybe the lips and then the eyes and the eyebrows. One thing that I found uh, particularly useful and you may notice me already doing when it comes to painting skin is making use of the fact that with watercolour you can paint in multiple layers and that they don't have to be dark layers, they can be light. So with skin you can continually build form and shapes and tones until the skin starts to look like skin. I found it personally quite daunting to do skin at the start for this very reason. I had a tendency to paint quite dark and it was hard to lift and build forms and shadows and highlights because I was painting like that. But if you are a bit scared and you do want to start painting skin, I recommend just painting very very lightly and continually working in layers. You can have hundreds of layers if you wanted to. It's only now that I'm a lot more confident with skin that I can do them in a few layers. But if you're just starting out with skin or want to learn how to paint skin, my biggest recommendation would be to start off using the most lightest washes you possibly can. Dilute your paints and just keep it light because it's easier to work light to dark. Just continually layer and layer and keep painting layers until you define those shadows, those skin tones and those forms. And you'll start to notice that your skin will eventually start to pop. I found that one of the coolest things about watercolour is that the initial colours that you start off with don't necessarily mean that they are the exact same colours that you'll end up with at the end because of the layering techniques. Here you can see that I'm starting off with a bit more of a yellow tinge, a yellow base skin tone. And by the end of it you'll see that the skin tones look similar to the other paintings, to the other faces. And it's because of the way I've built those skin tones and the forms. So I started off with that very washed out yellow and now I'm building in the reds. And by doing so, by using different base layers and initial skin layers, these colours do eventually pop out and make the skin glow. So underpainting or those underlayers are also very important and they can change the colours and the way they look at the very end. To demonstrate another example, here I'm trying to paint a, a darker skin tone, which by the way, I don't often paint darker skin tones, I'm not that used to them or experienced, but I wanted to give it a shot for example's sake. You can see me here, I'm painting more with a muted brown for those initial layers and I'm adding some blue undertones for the shadows as well. From there I'm starting to add more darker browns until those shadows and those forms really start to take shape and pop out. Also, for those who are wondering how to paint highlights when it comes to skin, the technique for doing highlights in watercolour is to actually leave specific areas unpainted. So areas that are unpainted are considered highlights or white. For this example, I've left the inner corner of the eye, um, part of the eyelid and the forehead as unpainted areas. This is where, where the highlights of the skin will occur. Alright, so from this point on, I'm just going to continue painting. This tutorial has been a bit brief in terms of how I paint skin, and I do intend on creating a more in-depth tutorial on how I paint skin, as well as other skin tones. So that will come in future, but for now, this will do. For the rest of the process, it's pretty much the same. I'm just using wet and dry technique to 
put down those first darker, brighter colors and just using a pulling technique to spread those colors out and get that soft blend of the skin. So without further ado, it's Q&A time. I've been, uh, I've been actually really excited to finally do a Q&A session. Alrighty, so the first question we have is from Pia. And it is, when is your favorite part of the day to work? And what do you eat for breakfast? Okay, first of all, that's kind of cheating because it's two questions in one, but I'll answer it anyway. Um, my favorite part of the day to work is at night, actually. I'm a bit of a night owl. I find myself most productive at night just because I find comfort in the thought that the world is just a little bit more quiet. It's easier for me to work knowing that. And I don't actually eat breakfast often. Uh, I tend to skip breakfast because I prefer to uh, sleep in. <laughs> All right, so we've got another cheater here with another two questions. <laughs> From Cup of Joe, what's your favorite part of art school and do you have any pets? The thing I love most about art school is probably being able to have art friends. I never really grew up with any art friends, so I never got to get excited about going art supplies shopping or anything, you know, and uh, now I do and it's, and it's awesome. <laughs> I don't have any pets sadly, I do want a dog so desperately and at some point in my life I have to get a dog and I will name him or her Fish. From Sophia, is there any medium that you would like to try in the future that you haven't yet? I want to really try out spray painting. I would love to one day be able to do a giant mural. It would be awesome to be able to see my work one day on a giant you know, side of a building or something. I think that would be sick. From Montana Sul Su Sullivan, uh, what do you use for your digital work? I currently use a Wacom Intuos Pro with Adobe Photoshop, but when I first started with digital art, I used Paint Tool Sci. It's this program which I think is absolutely awesome. It's much more affordable and has really, really great uh, intuitive skill sets and tools. It's the program that I used before Photoshop, and then eventually once I got more used to Paint Tool Sci and painting digitally, I eventually was able to switch over to Photoshop and still maintain a lot of those skill sets that I developed from Paint Tool Sci. So if you're beginning out in digital art or you want to try it out, I highly, highly recommend Paint Tools Eye. And from Shaked Sneer 91 uh, what are your suggestions for the out-of-states artists thing to make their way into the art industry? Social media, full stop. If you're out of the states and you want to make it into the industry or you want to get your name or work out there, social media is your answer. It is this thing that has allowed artists and creatives and aspiring you know, individuals to bypass physical location and distance and be able to expose themselves and promote themselves and market them for whatever it is that they want to do. My suggestion is to go out there and put your work online, on social media, on the DeviantArt, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. Put it out there and be active about it. Submit your folios, submit your work to galleries, to studios, to magazines, everything. Just constantly put your name out there. By doing so, people will see your work. And at the end of the day, that is what you want. You want your work to be seen. And things will happen to you naturally. Opportunities will come to you. For example, uh, I now work at this art magazine, Beautiful Bazaar, because I put my work out there. They found my work, they reached out to me, and they asked me to be part of an exhibition, and then before you know it, I was working at the magazine, and now I'm the designer of the magazine. From 246 Willow 246, I'm currently doing my major artwork for my HSC in visual arts, and I don't know whether to continue the artwork in watercolour or explore other mediums. I always find myself going back to watercolour because that's what I love and I feel like I'm not detailed or skilled enough to produce the work. What are your suggestions? I'm stuck. Okay, I relate to this very, very strongly because this is exactly where I was back in my high school uh, equivalent of HSC, which was VCE. My advice straight up is do it. Explore other mediums and try painting in a completely different medium that you're not comfortable with. For me, it was digital art. So I only ever painted with digital art and I was confident in that and I hated painting in any other medium other than digital. But for my high school art subject final, we were forced to experiment with another medium and I decided to just try out watercolour and flash forward a couple of years, now I'm doing watercolour paintings as a career and I'm, I'm doing all of this and you never know what you'll love, you never know if it will work with you and if you'll love it and you'll excel in it and you'll be a master of it. Just Give it a shot, please for my sake, please give it a shot. From Skater Lily, what do you see yourself doing in five years? Um, 
That's kind of a hard question because I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow, let alone a week or a year or five years from now. But I think I'd like to imagine myself in five years time to be a full-time working professional artist, uh, a YouTuber as well. And I also really want to start teaching. And from Ikram Kalam, are you planning to upload any more tutorials and what do you think you should upload? Uh, yes, I'm planning to upload more tutorials. I do want to do a lot more on how to paint faces and skin and techniques and everything. Yeah, I think I'd love to keep doing t tutorials. People seem to be asking for those quite a lot. And from Fragments of Hope, what are your biggest art fears and do you ever feel like you're not good enough at what you do? I think what I'm most scared about is fear of failure and not in terms of the eyes of other people but more so in terms of myself and internally. The goals I set out for myself, what I can achieve in the future, whether I'll be able to achieve what I want in the future and even just the uncertainty of whether I can actually do this. I think that's kind of a crippling fear, the future and not knowing whether I'll fail or not. And last but not least, probably my favourite question of all of these from Ali Freakin' Jandra. I just love your art. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I, I love you too. And that brings us to the end of the Q&A segment. Thank you guys all so much for all your questions. Please do continue to ask more questions. You know, put them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to use them for more future Q&A videos. Once again, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for providing me with an awesome new website. Yes! <laughs> yeah, Kellogg's Lips has a new website. I am still tweaking and working on it, but it's been a blast and I love it so far. If you do want to try designing your own website, portfolio or online shop of your own, go to www.squarespace.com forward slash Kellogg's Loops. You do get to start off with a free trial and also a 10% off discount from your first purchase or domain. It is honestly so simple and easy to use with loads of clean designs. I mean, hey, even I managed to put together my own website and I think that says a lot. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. I know this video was a bit different, but please do let me know in the comments below if you guys do want more of these kinds of videos where I just hang out, paint, and talk. I hope you guys are having an awesome day, and I'll see you soon.